In today's market, the average interest rate on houses is 8%. So is buying a house right now a bad time? Kirby, what do you think? Moving house right now, are you talking more like own occupied, meaning just moving out of mom's house or moving out of your parents' house and going to live? Or are you talking about as an investor or are you talking about as, you know, a co-op, a friend saying we're going to buy our first rental property? What's, what's, what angle are you shooting for? Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because that's kind of what I want to dive into on this is, you know, both of those sides, because I'm hearing people think that right now is a bad time for everybody, but investors, homeowners, and that's not my opinion, but I want to see what your thoughts are for both sides. Yeah. Simply, um, I don't think it's ever a quote unquote bad time to buy. The only time I think it's a bad time to buy a property is if you pay list price. So if you look on Zillow and you see a house for 450000 and you pay 450000 I believe that it's a bad buy. And I say that because people believe or have the assumption that real estate agents and Zillow know what the hell they're doing. And what I mean by that is the purchase price or list price that's on Zillow or on the MLS is what a seller is hoping that they can receive. Real estate agents already know that most people or people with some kind of sense will try to negotiate the price down. So they list the price higher than what they believe is worth or what the true value of the house is, expecting to get talked down or given the room to give concessions. And when you, let's talk them down from four, 430 to maybe let's say 420, that was the original price they wanted always. So if you're paying the price that's on the listing, you you are far behind. You it was a bad purchase. You made it under. I mean, it's underwater. I mean, well, especially in this raising interest rate environment. You know, the people that was doing that during COVID, they was just, just getting bailed out by the low interest rates, and people was more crazier than them and would pay a higher price than that was just uh, that was just paid for less. You know, a couple months. You know, a year ago, or comps in the area. That's just what that situation was. But that's the only time I really think that it's a bad time is when people pay list price for property. I don't care if it's investing. I don't care if it's owner. I, um, I say take your emotions out the game. But besides that, um, I believe it's always a good time to buy real estate with the caveat being if you're getting an attractive price. So if it's at 2% interest and it's an attractive price, or if it's at 8% or 9% interest rate, but it's an attractive price, that's when I I believe that's the best time to buy real estate. So I, I'll you know dive a little bit deeper into that, but I don't want to take up the whole segment talking yeah. about my philosophy. Yeah, I would agree. I think right now it's an even better time for investors than it is for home buyers. But there's a lot of truth to what you said. It just depends on the price that you're paying. And, you know, regardless of the interest rate, if you're a home buyer that wants to buy this home and live there for many years, rather than just trying to buy a home and live there for a year or two and then move. Because in that sense, you might as well be looking just to rent. But if you're looking to be a homeowner for a decade or longer, then, then yeah, I mean, it just depends what's, what price is comfortable for you to afford you know what can you afford regardless of the interest rate you can always refinance that in the future for investors right now i think it's great because with high interest rates sellers understand that it's not it's no longer a, a seller's market how it was in 2021 and you know the huge price like the high prices that we saw you know in houses getting offers of over asking and all that i don't think we're seeing much of that anymore and so I think for investors, there's a lot of opportunities that they have to make lower offers, much lower offers, not like you said, 430 to 420, you know, like 430 to 380 or something. And so, you know, to get prices lower to where it meets your standard and 
all you're looking for as an investor is just to see if the property will cash flow, you know, running the numbers on that and look by comparing the price, you know, considering how much rent you can get out of the property, what price are you going to pay based off of what offer you can, you know, how low you can bring the price down and so forth. Now, not it's not to say every property on the market is an opportunity. You have to find, you have to run the numbers on the properties to see what, what you can do and what, what you can, what you're able to make work for you. But there is definitely a better chance of making a low ball offer now than there was two years ago, I would say. So now I agree with you wholeheartedly. 2021, 2022, 2020, making low ball offers. I mean, even though I got deals done in those time frames, it was way harder to get that price down because they just knew the market was on fire. And if I didn't buy it, somebody else would. So it was more stringent. But now, I believe if, I mean, now it's no secret. It's no secret interest rates are, you know, sky high, you know, compared to where they was at. You know, it's almost triple from where it was at, you know, just a year or two ago. So everybody know that it's very stressful on the buyer. So it doesn't make sense for somebody. Well, it makes sense. But if somebody, I would word it this way. If somebody has their property up for sale now, unless it's, you know, a class property, a neighborhood, and it's not over, you know, $450,000. If it's not those dynamics in the in that property, then they're desperate because everybody know that it's a bad time. This is a bad time to uh, buy. So if you're selling, that means you're desperate to get rid of that property. You know, it's. The number of people, Freddie, uh, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac just came out with a survey last week that said 86% of the people believe that this is a bad time to buy a property. So if people putting their houses on the market, it's because they're very desperate to get rid of it. If it's an investor putting a rental property on the market, it's because they probably bought in the last year or two the property. They paid way over the home's value, but because interest rates were low, they figured they can pay up. And then they figure, oh, I'll raise rents. And now they realize and they can't capture the rents that they thought that would make it cash flow. So now they're going to sell it. Or it's the people that was buying for appreciation and they realize the property is not appreciating and they can't sit there and fund the living expenses for people that's living into the unit. I mean, we saw in Florida, left and right, what's the what's the description in the, you know, when they sell in these houses? Oh, uh, tenants are paying below market rent. And you have room to raise it. But the thing is, is the interest rates rose too, so fast. You know, other debt obligations, student loans came back, you know, a couple of layoffs in the tech sector or what have you in different um, industries. Now they can't capture that rent that they was they was promised on that description. And that's all it was, was promised on the description because some of these places maybe was written for $1,000 a month. That was close to market rate. Let's say market was 1200 but you know, people was putting, oh, you can get 15, 18, you know, realtors will say any damn thing, but 15, 18 a month. But that is like historical highs that couldn't be captured, especially with the economics in that certain region. And we're talking about certain parts of Florida. I mean, I see places right now, $3,000 a month for a one bedroom. So it's a whole nother dynamic. And then like, just look at the economies of scale. There's no, there's not a lot of jobs in Florida where you can afford to pay those types of rent, right? I mean, most of the people that got those type of jobs, they already have a house. You know, people need roommates. They need roommates, the side hustle, and a boyfriend on the side just to be able to afford rent these days. It's it's that crazy. And um, so that's the, that's the thing. And you see a lot of people, when you go down there to the sales history of the property, you see they bought it a year or two ago. I mean, I'm talking about on the investor side, you, they bought it a year or two ago. They got tenants in there and they're selling it. They're selling it because the property don't cash flow. And they and they realize now after they bought, bought it, you know, mistakenly, uh, that they will never get to those rents in the time frame that they wanted. Will the rents eventually get up there five, 10 years from now? Maybe. But is there, is, can they raise it from $1,000 a month to $1,800 a month in one fell swoop? And if somebody, even if the tenant can't afford it, they move out. Was somebody going to come to that unit and pay it? No. 
And now they sitting there hemorrhaging money left and right. I think um, Mike Zuber called it alligator properties. That's that's what they're doing. So you see them coming back on the market because they're desperate to sell. Or people, owner op, and I'm, I'll wrap it up real quick. Like owner ops, if they got those pro uh, properties for sale, you know, everybody got their own financial situation. You know, people could have lost a job. You know, they could probably be moving out of Florida, like we talked about. It's going, it's going to be a lot of migration out of these expensive, expensive areas. You've seen the exodus out of, you know, California. You see the exodus out of New, New York, New Jersey, and things like that. But people are going to start moving around to more affordable places. And, you know, we see it a lot in here in Florida, you know, especially like the retirees that's on fixed income. That fixed income, you could used to could live in Florida for very cheap. Now those people on fixed income because of the price, how fast the pro price risen on everything from rent to food to gas to, you know, insurance, you know, what have you. And they're on fixed income and their fixed income is not moving at the pace that all these uh, costs are inflating up. They're having to pack up their bags and move to lower cost states, you know, like Georgia, like Alabama, like Arkansas. They're moving in with their kids. They're, you know, moving back home. And I hear a lot of that, especially walking around Florida during COVID. Everybody was coming down to Florida. Now, when I walk around, every time I'm seeing somebody, they talk about how they're leaving to go back to where they came from and move in with family members because they can't afford the high cost of living. So that's the dynamic that we're in. But for the people that's buying it looks bad because of the interest rate, but it gives you an opportunity to negotiate, 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 because you realize now that these people are desperate and they have to sell. But if you're not negotiating, then it's a bad time in the market for you. Yeah, absolutely. So all that being said, guys, if you have a question, leave it, let us know down below in the comment section. Uh, hit the like button, subscribe, share, and we'll see you guys in the next one.